Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So I've had the Odroid Go Super for about eight months now. And when I first got it, I was pretty disappointed in it. Despite having a nice five inch display, I really wasn't a fan of the analog sticks, the D-pad, as well as the face button. I felt like all of these components were just a little bit too small for such a big device. And so a couple months into owning the device, I decided to swap out some of its components. I ended up switching out that drab gray case for the clear case that you see here. I also added Vita analog sticks, as well as some red membranes from the Game Boy Color. And I made it a point to document all of those changes here on this channel. So if you have an Odrego Super and you're interested in trying out one of these mods, I have full walkthroughs available here on this channel. Now today is gonna to be the next step in the transformation of my Odrego Super. Here, we're gonna change it all out for a custom shell made by my retro game case. Now this aluminum case features a new D-pad as well as new face buttons, but it also stays fairly true to the original design of the device itself. There are some thoughtful tweaks that are involved in this, but the installation process can get a little bit tricky. And so this video here is meant to help you through that process, as well as to give you my review of this new metal shell. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. So like I mentioned before, this mod comes from MyRetroGameCase.com. Their site features several different case mods, for example, for the Pow Kitty RGB10, as well as the Ambernick RG280V. In the pack, you're going to find some metal buttons, but they also sell plastic ones too. It also is going to come with its own screws, as well as an Allen wrench to help you install. The kit also comes with an upgraded 5000 mAh battery. That's 1000 mA more than the original one. And you can also purchase PS Vita analog sticks if you don't have them already. Now my kit came with two different colored buttons. I think that's really just to give me some choice here, but my plan is to go with the gray ones. And then here's the case itself. It's a really well done case. I'm pretty impressed with it. On the back, they have holes for a speaker grill as well as ventilation for the CPU. And the front looks pretty nice too. So let's actually start putting this thing together. So here's my current Odrego Super. In addition to the changes I made on the front, I also added a heatsink here in the back. But honestly, this was mostly cosmetic, and I don't think I'm going to use it in the metal shell. At first, I was concerned about the red function buttons. I thought they were going to clash with the color of the shell. But luckily, I kept my old gray ones, so we'll try those ones out too. Now, the hardest thing about this whole mod is taking the screen off. And it's actually not too hard, you just need a hairdryer. And all you do with this is you just blow hot air around the edges of the screen, and that's going to loosen up the glue or the tape that holds it together. So we'll do that later. First, let's get to the screen itself. The original Odrego Super just uses Phillips head screws, so any small screwdriver will allow you to get this off. I think there are six or seven screws altogether. Next, unhook the speaker, and then pull off all the shoulder buttons and other upper function buttons. Then you can unhook the battery, and then remove the two inner screws which hold the board in place. Then detach the ribbon display cable, and you should be able to pull the board right off from there. Now you can remove all the membranes and the buttons inside, and you're gonna wanna use a little bit of leverage to get the start and select function buttons out. Okay, so once you've removed the screen, you may wanna have some adhesive available. I recommend something like B7000 glue, or you could also use some double-sided tape that is made for repairing cell phones or tablets or things like that. Either one of these are gonna work fine, and I'll leave them linked in my written guide below. Okay, so fast forwarding here, I went and used my hairdryer in a different room, and that's because if I use it in the room where my desk is, it tends to blow a fuse. Either way, just spend a couple minutes blowing hot air around the edges of the screen. This screen can actually withstand a good amount of heat, so don't worry about overheating it. After a few minutes, you should be able to remove the screen with little trouble. It's basically just held in place with some very thin double-sided tape. And honestly, most of the tape stayed intact, except for on one side. So on that side, I am going to add some B7000 glue. And that's it. All you have to do is just place it inside the metal shell. Make sure that the ribbon cable is facing to the right. Once you have it inserted, let's make sure that everything sets. So let's put some weight on here to just hold it in place. And one of my favorite things to do during this time is to talk about some of my favorite books. And the books you're seeing now I featured on previous installation guides, but I'm trying to make a tradition of showing you a new book every time. So the book I want to talk about today is called All the Names, and it's by Portuguese author José Saramago. Now this is a beautifully written book about a low-level administrator who basically does record-keeping for one city. And at some point, he kind of has this awakening in himself and goes on his own little adventure. Saramago is best known for the book Blindness, which was turned into a feature film starring Julianne Moore about 10-15 years ago. It's a pretty good movie, but also a very good book. Anyway, if you're looking for something new to read and you really like long and run-on sentences, this might be a good book for you. It's one of my favorites. And of course, if you need extra weight, you can always add a retro handheld device of your own. 
All right, so it's been about 20, 30 minutes now, so let's check out how things are looking. And yeah, it's well set in place, and the screen is perfectly flush with the device itself. It's exceptionally well made for being a third-party product like this. Okay, let's start putting it back together. We're going to add all of the buttons here to the front. When it comes to the face buttons, don't worry about the order of them because they all have their own unique space. It's pretty easy to figure out. We're going to try the gray membranes first to see how they fit. As I'm putting them in, I can immediately tell that they're much looser than the red ones, which is not a good sign. When you add the volume button facing down like this, you want to make sure the plus side is on the left. And if you're going to be installing PS Vita analog sticks, this is basically the setup here. You just need to detach the old ones and put the new ones in, and then reattach the ribbon cables. And I demonstrate how to do this in one of my other Odrego Super videos. Okay, once you're ready, the most important thing when adding the board is to push that display ribbon cable through its little slot on the right side of the board here. Then just make sure everything sets into place. Once it's in place, go ahead and gently push that display ribbon cable into its slot. You're going to want to use that little piece of plastic there to hold it in place. Okay, so let's remove this battery since we're going to be replacing it. And this new battery looks to be a little bit too big for the board, so I'm going to attach it to the case instead. We'll worry about that in a second. And like I mentioned, I'm not going to use this heat sink anymore since it was mostly cosmetic, so I'm just going to remove that altogether. So let's attach the battery to the back of the case here. First, I'm going to remove this tape from the board just because I don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to add my own double-sided tape here to the battery and I'm gonna attach it directly onto the case. I'm just kinda of eyeballing where to place it, but I wanna keep it away from the holes on the left side. Now because I had a transparent case before, the LED lights were way too bright on it, so I covered it up with electrical tape. But now that I have a solid case again, I'm gonna actually remove that electrical tape because I don't think I need it anymore. Okay, so now that I have it in place, I just wanna get a feel for the buttons, and everything seems okay, except I'm not really excited about these function buttons. You can see they barely stick out of the case themselves, and they're pretty hard to push down on. Everything else seems to feel okay, the face buttons, the analog stick, and the function button. Now my Vita 6 are getting kind of beat up just from use, but that's fine, I don't really mind. So yeah, I went ahead and pulled off the board again, and even though these two membrane buttons are about the same size, the red ones feel just that much firmer. So I'm going to swap these out instead and use the red ones. I don't really like the coloring of these, but I want to make sure that I'm able to actually use them. In terms of replacing the speaker, it's actually really easy. There's no adhesive at work or anything, you just need to pop it out and then pop it back into the new case. Now, I forgot to film the actual part where I was screwing in these screws here, but let me give you a couple words of warning. First, there are actually two different sized screws that come with this kit. And even though it actually comes with seven small screws, you're only going to need five of them. And so initially, when I put them together, I put all seven screws onto the case around the edges as you see here but the holes that you see highlighted in red are actually not supposed to be used for the inner PCB. Those are for the outer screws when you put the case in. So instead I learned the hard way and I had to remove these four screws after I first put them in. And I'm just warning you now so you don't have to do that yourself. Instead, you just want to take two of those screws and use them with the two inner screw holes that we used with the original case. So this is the actual layout that you need to use with this case, these five screw holes here. Okay, moving on. Let's now put on the rest of the components on top. I'm going to add the volume bar again, and then you can add the shoulder buttons. Now these shoulder buttons have a little bit of a longer distance on one side. You want the longer distance to face towards the front of the device itself. That's going to allow it to line up perfectly with the micro switches. From there, just connect the speakers and then the battery. Sorry that I don't have a good angle for this, it's kind of hard to see. And that's it, just press it together, and then screw in those four outer screws. Now the kit also comes with four rubber bumpers that are supposed to go over the outer screw holes, but these bumpers are a little bit too long for the case itself, and Eddie over at my retro game case had warned me that these are a little bit too long. So all you have to do is just take some scissors and cut off about a quarter inch from the bottom of each of these. Then they're going to fit in perfectly. Okay, so we're actually done with the mod at this point. So moment of truth, let's uh, turn it over and see how it looks. Okay, so other than the million fingerprints on the screen, it actually looks pretty good, and I don't really mind those red accents on the case. That being said, the function buttons are still a little bit hard to push down on, definitely one of the weaker parts of this case. 
And you know, the shoulder buttons on these devices have always been really flimsy. As you can see, the outer shoulder buttons are just really loose, but that's the same way on the original case as well. The D button feels nice and big, and it gives a satisfying click to everything. The function buttons spin in place, which kind of bothers me a little bit, but otherwise they seem fine. And the face buttons are super solid. The analog sticks are exactly how I remember them, and like I mentioned, the function buttons below are kind of hard to press down on. Okay, so let's give it a real life test here with Super Mario World. You know, it feels really good, but I will say these buttons are super loud. This metal on metal setup is just kind of clacky feeling, but it's super responsive as you can see with the D-pad here. Overall, it took me several minutes to kind of get used to this setup. I've never played with a metal on metal case like this, but I can see why people would like this. It definitely doesn't have like a retro feel to it, but it does have a unique and premium sense to it. When I'm playing this in my hands, it's very obvious that this is a custom setup, but it's also kind of luxurious as well. And yeah, these function buttons on the bottom, they are definitely a pain in the butt to use. Luckily, you only really need to use them for hotkeys and things like that. Okay, so let's try a different game here. I'm gonna pick something at random. I'm literally closing my eyes right now in this video and just picking something at random. Okay, so I'm not really sure what this game is here, but it's some sort of platformer, which is probably gonna be pretty good to test when it comes to responsiveness of controls. And sure enough, it feels good. One of the nice things about the face buttons is that they're kind of heavy, and so it feels really satisfying to press down on them. And it also feels like I can just press on these super fast, like they're turbo buttons. And that's definitely not something I felt with the original case. To be honest, I'm kind of torn about the entire aesthetics here. It seems like way overboard to have metal on metal like this, and this thing feels just like this big chunky monster. But at the same time, I'm kind of stoked about the audacity of this thing. Like not only are we going to make a huge device, but we're going to make it metal too. And not only that, we're also going to make metal buttons. It's just so ridiculous, but kind of fun. So yeah, you could definitely say that I am enjoying this new setup. Now I have mixed feelings about the rubber buttons on the back. You can definitely feel them when you're holding the device itself, but it's nice that they actually work as bumpers on the back here. And so you're not gonna scratch up the case when you're moving it around on your table. Okay, testing out some other games here. Here's the Sonic the Hedgehog ports on Emulek. I really like using these on the Odrego Super because they're widescreen and this device has a 16 by nine display. And the colors on this device are super saturated. So it looks really nice on this five inch screen. Let's move over to a different firmware. Here's RetroWaz. One of my favorite things about RetroWaz is that it has support for a lot of different ports. So for example, Shovel Knight runs really well on this device and it's in beautiful widescreen as well. Same thing with the Super Mario 64 port. It runs at 60 frames per second and is natively in widescreen. This is quite an epic way to play Mario 64. And RetroWaz recently implemented the Streets of Rage remake port, just like they did on ArcOS on other devices. And RetroWaz also has support for LZ Doom, which means that you can play Doom ports like Call of Duty Brutal Doom, which you see here. Man, this is such a chaotic game, but it's kind of fun to bust out every once in a while. Okay, let's see how much this thing weighs. 406 grams, that is ridiculously heavy. For example, the RGB 10 Max, which has the same size screen, is only 217 grams. So it's almost half the weight. Something like the PS Vita is 284 grams. And my next largest metal device is the RG350M at 262 grams. Even the GPD XD Plus, which is a bit on the heavy side at 319 grams, is still much lighter than the metal Odrego Super, despite being a clamshell device. Now, even at 405 grams, this is significantly lighter than the Steam Deck, which is going to be something like 650 grams. But I think something to bear in mind with the heaviness of this device is just how solid it feels too. The D-pad is super solid and responsive. Using the analog sticks against a metal case like this feels really great. All in all, other than these function buttons on the bottom, everything's an improvement when it comes to the user interface. And sure, I could complain about these shoulder buttons, which have never been that great, but I really don't think that a case is going to fix these buttons anyway. And the way this screen is perfectly flush with the case itself is really beautiful. It looks a lot like a first party device. And the responsiveness of the face buttons is greatly improved. And while I'm not a fan of these function buttons up top spinning like this, it's something I got used to after a couple days of use. And you know, despite the fact that these rubber bumpers are a little bit disruptive, I do appreciate how they hold the device in place when you're laying it on a table. 
Okay, so let's talk about the value of this mod kit in general, because if you have an Odrego Super, you might be considering this metal case. So let's break it down for you real quick. An Odrego Super itself costs between $80 and $90, depending on where you buy it from. I personally like to buy mine from Ameridroid, and it's $90 there. Now this kit, which comes with the case and the buttons and the upgraded battery, is $78 right now. And if you don't already have PS Vita analog sticks, they're going to set you back another $8 each. So altogether, you're looking at paying something like $200 to buy an Odrego Super, as well as the case, as well as the analog sticks, and to put it all together. And honestly, I'm not really sure it's worth that price if you were to buy everything from scratch. And that's because the other 5-inch device that's available in this market is a much better value and also has an improved case from the original Odrego Super. It's quite a bit smaller, but also uses Nintendo Switch analog sticks and a pretty good D-pad and face buttons as well. And this will only set you back $120. So all in all, I would say if you're looking for a 5-inch device, I would still recommend the RGB10 Max over the metal Odrego Super. Now that being said, if you buy a new Odrego Super directly from Hard Kernel, which is the company that makes these devices, they very recently upgraded the analog sticks themselves. As you can see here, they now have Nintendo Switch style analog stick covers. And they've changed the color of the D-pad and the face buttons for some reason, but still, they're the same size, which I consider to be undersized. And honestly, I haven't been able to test one myself, so I'm not really sure if any of the internals feel better either. Either way, I do think it's something to consider. Okay, so yeah, that's about it for this video here. I just wanted to show you how to install this metal shell in case you want to buy the upgrade kit. And like I've already mentioned, if you're looking at buying an Odrego Super from scratch and you want to get the metal shell, I'm not really sure that this $200 price tag altogether is going to be worth it. But if you have a regular Odrego Super and you're not happy with the D-pad or the face buttons like I was, this might be a viable upgrade for you. Instead of having to buy an entirely new device, you could just buy a new case to get more use and enjoyment out of your existing Odrego Super. Anyway, that's it for this video. I really appreciate you sticking around with me to watch this whole thing. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.